just why should you care about the carbon impact of your marketing and your website? Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast. Hello and welcome. It's great to have you tuning in yet again. I came across today's guest when she was part of an event run by my pals at Push On. Hello, Simon. I hope the run is a good one this morning. And she was also highly recommended as a guest by past guest on both our shows, the excellent Rob Harrison Plasto. So thank you, Rob, too. Let's just say our guest comes highly recommended and she is sharing loads of great advice and tips as well as opening our eyes to a big new topic to bear in mind in our e-commerce marketing strategy. I am super excited to have her on the show and to be sharing this with you because Jay is tackling an area that whilst this is probably the first time you're going to hear about it or start considering it, you are going to hear a lot more about it as the weeks and months roll by in 2023. It is the cost to the planet of your e-commerce marketing activities, the carbon impact of your ads, the carbon impact of those clicks, the carbon impact of your website. Just why should you care about it and why does caring about it and the way of reducing it improve the costs of your business by lowering them and improve the quality of the customers you're going to be recruiting. It's a fascinating chat you're about to listen to and make sure you listen right to the end of the episode because Jay's also brought along some phenomenal top tips for that last part of the show and you'll also get my take on this episode with some suggestions of further listening to help you improve your ads and improve the carbon impact of your business. We're now live with Chloe's e-commerce club, my new free online club where the whole e-commerce master plan audience can come together. The point of the club is to help you all improve your e-commerce businesses, to help you solve your marketing challenges, to get supplier recommendations, learn new tactics and much more. We're starting simple and focusing on that core of helping us all get through this challenging year, but we've got lots lined up for the coming months and I'm sure we'll add more things based on your needs and feedback. It really is a club all about you and supporting your business. And yes, I will personally be hanging out in the club Monday to Friday to help you. So how can you join me in the club? Well, just go to ecmp.info forward slash club. It's totally free to join. So come and join me and hundreds of our listeners at ecmp.info forward slash club. And now to introduce today's guest expert. Jay Cowell has been driving marketing for consumer facing brands since 2004 and for the last 10 years has been doing it via her multi award winning agency launch, the paid media agency for ambitious businesses where her goal is to build the happiest performance agency. Hello, Jay. Hi, lovely to see you, Chloe. It's great to have you here. We're going to get into a super fascinating topic in a moment. But first off, how did you end up in the world of e-commerce marketing? It was over 10 years ago now, and it was driven by flexibility. I needed, I'd had kids, I was in a marketing job, I was the head of sales and marketing at a company, and I needed flexibility. And I thought, well, if I've got a limited number of hours that I can work, what's the biggest impact I can have in marketing? And I realized that Google Ads and performance marketing was how I could make the biggest change in the smallest amount of time. So I became a specialist in paid media. I love that focus. And um, clearly you have a love for paid media and performance marketing given what, at least a decade on, you're still doing it. it. It combines that amazing ability to connect with a customer, drive them to a website and then see the results in a really quite short period of time, especially within e-commerce where the click to transaction might actually be in that same interaction. And I liked being able to go to a client and then say, here's what you've spent, here's what you've made in return. Now let's start experimenting with better strategies and better messaging. It's trickier now with measurement in this cookie Armageddon world that we're in. 
But um, that just adds to the challenge. And I think that the media landscape is more interesting than it's ever been before. Yeah, I, I've, I've been making the prediction for this year that one of the things we're going to see is that marketing budgets are going to be spread over more things than ever before. Because to my mind, the last kind of six months is the first time there's been a valid alternative to Google and Facebook ads. Is That's what it feels like to me. You're a lot closer to this than I am. Are you seeing that, that budgets are going across more channels these days for the average e-commerce brand? I would agree. There's definitely product diversification or channel diversification. This idea that your customer isn't on a particular channel all of the time, that that there are multi-channels, that you can get them at different moments of intent, different moments of connection. It should have been the way all the time. But unfortunately, we, the the kind of the crack cocaine of Facebook ads, you just throw those ads up, you got this huge return on investment. The reality of that was that most of it was overcounting anyway. Mm -hmm. And that really, we weren't connecting with our customers. We were just broadcasting to them and we were seeing great results and we forgot strategy, we forgot messaging, we forgot higher purpose of what, why? Are we just trying to sell more stuff? No, we're trying to build a customer and build a tribe. That's what's interesting to me. I think that's going to be one of those subplots of this year is going to be people who can actually do marketing rather than just chuck money at Facebook. And we started to see it last year, but we're not here to to talk about that exciting element of the advertising world. We're here to talk about another exciting element of the advertising world. And this is something which I think we, we are ahead of the curve talking about, but I think by the time we get to, hopefully by the time we get to the summer, Definitely by the time it gets to the end of the year, every marketing department in the country is going to be worrying about this, which is the carbon impact, not of our business, but of our actual marketing. So what on earth do we mean by this, Jay? Well, the average um, website, it costs in CO2 something like 1.76 grams for every page view. So over a year, if you had 100 thousand page views a month that would be over 2,000 kilograms of co2 a year for one website and I looked I looked in a day in November it was Black Friday time it wasn't actual Black Friday weekend but I looked at launches MCC where all of our Google Ads accounts are and on the Sunday there were 2.6 million impressions from our Google Ads And there were 37,000 clicks that resulted in websites visits. And some of those would have been to websites that had renewable energy hosting. Some of them would have been to websites that have got optimized, you know, low carbon impact because they've got smaller images or they've got lazy loading. There are various things that you can do to, to improve that impact. But I thought, wow, we're one agency in the southwest of the UK doing, you know, ads for 100 companies. Can you imagine if you add all of those Sundays up to all of the agencies, to all of the brands across the world, what that impact was? And it was, you know, this sudden realisation that the cloud isn't like some beautiful cloud in the sky. It's massive data centres that need water to cool them, that needs electricity to power them, that need space and land that's being taken away from growing crops. It, they need to be replaced. And I felt an overwhelming sense of responsibility that I needed to talk about it and find a way of doing something about it. Those campaigns we've all seen in Google ads, especially in the Google shopping arena, that have a massively high bounce rate, but financially are still worth leaving on. It puts a bit of a different taste in the mouth when you're looking at those, because that's all those landings on the website that were totally wasteful, totally unnecessary. Are you finding now, you know, since your epiphany moment in November, it's having a different impact on how you're, you're approaching campaigns and optimization? I went to the team with it and I showed them my findings and they're all quite conscious We're, you know, we're on our journey to be a B Corp agency. We're very conscious. We employ lots of millennials and some Gen Z. In the future, we'll be employing more Gen Z. This is a, a generation of people who have woken up to what we're doing. So I asked them, you know, what are your opinions of this? How, you know, how would it impact the campaigns? And their first thing was, well, 
the client, how do you talk to a client or a business, uh, an e-commerce business, and say, we also now need to add this as a layer of complexity to what we're doing? Is it going to impact our agency to say, well, you should spend less? It's not about spending less. It's not as easy as that. It's about being efficient, being less wasteful. It's about being what we should be in every area of our life. It is brilliant that energy costs more now because we were wasting it. It will force, it will enable companies to to invest in renewable energy because suddenly now there's money in it. That's why it wasn't being invested in before because there was no financial return from investing in renewable energy. Now it will make sense for people to, to lessen their wastage. They will have a better impact on the planet, but they will also then be able to spend more time on the thinking and the creativity that is what's uniquely human about us and and uniquely, you know, brand specific, that messaging, rather than on volume and on impressions and on just driving as much traffic as ho- as possible, hoping it will stick. <laughs> yes, I, I want to come back to that creative and strategic side of things in a second. But I think it's just worth double downing on the point you were making there around how the carbon impact is a bad thing. But you know, the money is the bit which will make people make a change because every single one of those visits to the website is costing carbon, but that also means it's costing you money. You know, if you can reduce, let's say if you, if through better ads and better marketing, you can reduce the number of visits to your website by 10%, that's 10% of your hosting fees, you know, and 10% of all sorts of other costs, which are being impacted as well. So it's, you know, if you want to be hard nosed about this, it financially makes sense to be looking at the waste. And if by putting a carbon count on it, it enables us to see it, that is a good manoeuvre for us. And that's a piece of education for the the business in question, the, the client, the brand, because if you're measuring success by website visits and you see that November versus October was down, there's this immediate sense of panic. And we need to educate clients about the metrics that matter, which are conversion rates, which is lifetime customer value, understanding that the cost per click actually doesn't matter. If that cost per click results in a conversion, it was worth £7 cost per click versus, uh, you know, tons of 75p's. But that is an education piece because the one thing that people are used to looking at is how many website visitors have we ha- have we got? And that's where everything from performance marketing, SEO, you know, there could be tons of wasteful blogs sitting, having a CO2 impact on your website that is driving irrelevant traffic. I wrote a blog in lockdown about um, lockdown lingo. And it was all about, you know, the all the different words that we were using, you know, to talk about these new, this new world of being locked down. And it drove tons of traffic to our website that was completely irrelevant. And I had to say to the marketing manager, we need to delete that. That's, that's wasteful. That's not relevant traffic. But she said, oh, but my stats look so good. And I said, well, we need to remember, we need to measure the things that matter, not just the things that we can see. We're in. I'm, I'm going to go way off piece here, Jay. Just to pre-warn you, <laughs> um, we are. We. I feel like we're at a tipping point in marketing and e-commerce from living in a place of mass volumes. I was going to say abundance, but abundance puts makes it sound too bad that we're moving away from it. But but big numbers mattering to a place where scarcity is the key thing and. There's a lot of of noise in the space at the moment about overstock and everyone having too much stock and, you know, collapsing under these massive piles of inventory for one reason or another. And, you know, that has partly come about because buyers and merchandisers are scared of running out of stock. So they keep buying it, even if the customer doesn't like it. And then we end up with all this big mass of waste that we've got to get rid of somehow. And I feel like we're, we're going through that tipping point in the marketing approach as well of going from let's just get go big and something will convert 
rather than going, let's find the right customers. Because of course, if we're converting the outliers, then they're unlikely to buy again. So then we've got all that marketing activity we send to them later. It's like, there's a, there seems to be a, we're recording this in January. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people posting about segment your Black Friday customers and, and stop marketing to the ones who aren't going to buy again. And you're like, well, why did you recruit them in the first place? So it, it has this ongoing impact if we're doing bad marketing, doesn't it? I agree. And the year on year comparison, month on month comparison, this this forever chasing targets needs to stop. And this is a good time for it to stop because you can't really compare things to last year. You couldn't really compare year on year to Black Friday because we were in a different world then. And we've obviously got GA4 coming now. Lots of people won't have data gathered. Mm -hmm. They'll be going for, to a new, a new set of data. So this is your chance. This next six months is your chance to look at your strategy and say volume, and meaningless met metrics need to stop being measured. Five years ago, I was at, I was at one of the, the big digital marketing conferences, like Search Love in London, and there was a talk about this cookie Armageddon that we were going to be facing. And five years ago, we were like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And it was all about how the, the brands that will win will be the ones that really have got a great marketing strategy that remember maybe marketing where you couldn't measure everything. And then the last 10 years, we've developed this generation of all, can I say, lazy marketeers who throw up ads or throw up messages, get volume, looking at, uh, at website visits versus, you know, versus sales, not looking at lifetime customer value, not looking at the things that you can't measure, which is how much are people talking about you offline, your, you know, your store visits offline, those clicks and more to businesses that are adding to a community you know, those are the things that also matter. And just because you can't measure some of that online doesn't mean that it's meaningless. So we should realise that the generation of marketeers that are going to come next are going to people, be people who are con more conscious about their jobs and how they're adding to the world. And they don't want to sell more crap. And therefore, the planet is going to benefit from that. But we should start now because we're running out of time we are we are indeed jay i could talk to you about this all day so we must find another way of talking about this um after this episode and find a way of getting that in front of everybody too but for anyone who's who's kind of listening to what we're saying going oh my god yes we need to be embracing this in our business we need to be taking steps on this in our business how would you advise them to start making a carbon and a cost and a output improvement in their marketing activity? What steps can they take? Start with things that you've got full control over. So you've got full control over your website. Have a conversation with your web team about how you can immediately make a difference to the carbon footprint of your website. And there's some great tools online. I'm a member of Beamer and they've got the green pages from Beamer. Their mission is to um, the, the world is missing a set of digital standards for sustainability and they've got links to lots of resources that are completely free and you'll be able to put your website through that and see how it fares. One of the challenges is that there's that you could put it into three different systems. It could come up with three different carbon measurements, but don't get bogged down in the detail of that. You know that an image takes a while to load. Have those images be as super low as possible. Video is great on a website, but you're going to have to probably do click to play because it automatically playing is going to be using up more carbon. Just start to educate yourself on what causes those CO2 emissions, what causes more data to, to be used up and, and get that right. Then talk to your agencies or your internal teams that are uh, in charge of your marketing. You know, spamming the hell out of people on email or remarketing with your pay media or ads that clearly aren't working, channels you know that have got bad eco-credentials. It is our responsibility to educate ourselves. There isn't a one website that's going to tell you exactly how to do it. A lot of this stuff is being done for the first time, but it is important, therefore must be prioritised. 
Okay, Jay, you've given us great advice already. Um, now it's time for us to get into the top tips. Before we go deep into the top tips, though, Jay, one quick question for you. You mentioned Beamer to check our websites on. How are we spelling that? B-I-M-A. It's the British Interactive Media Association. Uh, they're a great organisation that have got councils that people sit on, and one of them is a sustainability council. Excellent. Thank you. So anyone who's going, oh, my God, how do I spell it? Now you know. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Competition in e-commerce is complex and growing your business can be challenging. That's why I would like to introduce you to Pricing, competitor price tracking and dynamic pricing optimization software for e-commerce merchants. You can monitor your competitors' price moves from a single dashboard and import all your products with a single click. You'll be able to track prices and make price comparisons from any website, marketplace or sales channel like Google Shopping and Amazon. Pricing's dynamic pricing app sets prices automatically to improve profit margins whenever market prices or stock availabilities change. Track unlimited competitors and increase your profit margins. Start a free trial now and get 50% off your first three months. Sign up now at ecmp.info forward slash pricing. That's ecmp for e-commerce master plan dot info forward slash P-R-I-S-Y-N-C. Do you, like me, have a bit of a software tools habit? Well, I love a good tool and the impact it can have on my business. For me, a good tool is one that solves a problem we have, that can save me and my team time, that improves performance and where the price is 100% worth it. That's why I've always got an eye on the latest tools to appear on AppSumo. Not heard of it? AppSumo is a site where you can buy key software tools for your business once and own them forever. For example, we use a tool I bought from AppSumo in 2020 for $49 to schedule all our Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook posts. In fact, whilst creating and promoting this very episode, me and the team will have used at least 10 tools I've bought from AppSumo. I'm a big fan. So go on, check out what's on offer right now by going to ecmp.info forward slash AppSumo. That's ecmp.info slash A-P-P-S-U-M-O. And I bet you'll find a brilliant solution for at least one of your problems. Go to ecmp.info forward slash AppSumo. It's time for the Top Tips round. Okay, Jay, we're into the top tips. Are you ready for these? I am and I'm excited. (laughs) That's what I like to hear. Okay. Your book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? I found this really challenging because I've got about seven books beside my bed at night and I'm trying to read a chapter a night. So I have narrowed it down to my current one, which is Burnout by Emily and Amelia Nagasi, which I believe is how you pronounce their surname. And it's all about completing the stress cycle. I'm four chapters in and it really shows you how you can look after yourself so that you can bring your best self to everyone else, to your work, to your home life. And it's actionable and I'm loving it. So that's burnout. Excellent. You said you'd narrow, did you narrow it down to one or did you narrow it down to two? Because you can have a second one if you'd like a second one. Can I? Anything by the Do Lectures. David Hyatt is like my hero and I'm reading Do Purpose at the moment, which is actually very digestible. It's almost like a magazine in a book and it's all about having purpose in your business. Nice. Excellent couple of recommendations there. Look after yourself and get clear on why you're doing it. Um, Okay, the traffic top tip. Which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? So obviously, I'm going to have a paid media channel here being a paid media princess. But I couldn't decide between YouTube or Pinterest. So I'm basically going to say anything that is video based. Video marketing is super, super effective and is accessible to all brands. It's game changing. Whether you're doing it on YouTube Shorts, whether you're doing it on Pinterest or TikTok, 
video first marketing. Love it. And I, they are so untapped, those two channels by e-commerce marketers right now. So untapped. I'll let you have an extra tip here if you want it, Jay. For anyone who's about to start with YouTube or Pinterest ads, what, any tip so they can avoid some pitfalls? Make sure that it's unskippable. That first five seconds is absolutely crucial. Production values don't have to be TV standard, but they do have to be true to your brand. An experiment. It's really cost effective. And actually, I think the biggest barrier is our mindset on it. We expect it to look like a TV commercial and it doesn't need to. Yeah, mindset, I think, is the biggest barrier blocker to doing video it's yeah anyway before we go d disappear off on that tangent as well today is the day of tangents uh the tool top tip maybe a collaboration tool a social media plugin a phone app or just a way of working is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day so i am going to go offline with this recommendation there's something about when you're writing and being offline you're in a different brain state you are more accessing your I think it's your alpha your beta I can't remember the brain waves but you're accessing <laughs> karma brain waves you're sitting back and you're being more reflective and I think that we don't spend enough time in our lives reflecting so I'm going to say the six minute diary which is three minutes in the morning three minutes at night it keeps you on track with your goals but it teaches you the importance of gratitude and being generous and I don't mean that financially I well it can be financially but I mean being generous with your time your positivity giving other people a high five it has a massive impact on your happiness and because our goal is to be the happy performance agency happiness is something that's really important to me it is mad how something as simple as journaling and gratitude diaries can have such a, an impact in our lives. So I, I love that as a tool top tip. Thank you, Jay. The growth top tip, finally, if you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1000, what would be your number one tip for them? So we talked about it a bit today and that is purpose. Why are you doing this? Why does the world need your product? Because if you aren't really clear on that, then everything else becomes harder and more wasteful. You can cut through the noise of the, is it 10,000 adverts we see a day? I mean, a Black Friday, it's probably 50,000. It's a ridiculous amount. You can cut through that noise faster if you've got a clear purpose and your marketing money will go further because there will be an amplification of other people wanting you to succeed and will be appealing to a generation that don't want to just buy more crap. Yeah, I, I love that. Thank you very much, Jay. Now, before we say goodbye, you have to let us know a little bit more about where the listeners can find you online and um, a little bit more about your agency too, please. Awesome. Well, Launch can be found at launchonline.co.uk or on the socials at Launch Online UK. I would say LinkedIn in particular, where I'm Jay Cowell and Launch Online UK. There are some absolute gold dust of ideas that come out from our team. There's 24 of us that are the brightest and best in the business. And I love championing their ideas and their experimentation and how they're trying to make pay media and performance a happy place and a positive place to be, but a place where we can make even the smallest brands get their marketing to sing. Excellent. Um, so it's launchonline.co.uk? Yes, it is. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jay. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast and talking about a topic which I really want everyone to embrace. So um, it's been brilliant chatting with you about it. So thanks for being on the show, Jay. Absolute pleasure. A lovely intro to the idea of considering the carbon as you improve your marketing and two hugely important trends within there that are hugely relevant this year. One being, if you're looking after your carbon, you're also looking after your costs, which is great news in a year like this. That is time and time again. It doesn't matter which bit of carbon reduction I look at whether it's website load speeds or whether it's email or whether it is your banking, 
when you make the right change for the human friendly planet, you also save money. So it really does help every element of your business. The second one being the shift we talked about a fair bit towards the end of last year about how you need to up your creative game that starts from the why, from why your customers buy from you, the emotions they connect with purchasing from you the emotional content of your marketing, the messaging, the copywriting, the graphics, the videos, all of that is crucial to get better response rates from the marketing you are doing. And all of that helps reduce the number of clicks that shouldn't be happening and improve your overall ROI and recruit the right customers to you in the first place. Lots of thought provoking um, things there from Jay. Any thoughts you've got on that, do let me know. I'd love to know what you think about this. If you do want more on it. To get your hands on all our notes from today's show, including the top tips and links to the things we mentioned, head over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast or to go direct to the notes about this episode, use ECMP for ecommercemasterplan.info forward slash the number of this episode. And then once you get to the website, make sure you add yourself to our email list because we share a lot of stuff on there before we share it anywhere else, including recent episodes of our sister podcast, Keep Optimising, where we've been tackling similar topics to what we've been talking about today. Last month was Google Ads Month. This month is all about marketing attribution, including a discussion on adding carbon per sale into your attribution activity. So make sure when you get to the website, you add yourself to our email list. Thank you so much for tuning into this and every episode of the e-commerce master plan podcast. I bring you a new interview every week because I want to inspire and help e-commerce business owners to succeed and thrive with your businesses, including progressing along the path to net zero. So if you know someone this show can help, please tell them to listen to the e-commerce master plan podcast. I hope you have an excellent week and don't forget to keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast. Don't miss out. It's time you joined Chloe's e-commerce club, our free club that's all about helping you grow your e-commerce store. Join right now for free at ecmp.info forward slash club.